but we are at time. Um, so first, welcome and thank you for coming to this, se to this session. It's a, I don't know, a very kind of exciting time for me because we're gonna show VEX working, um, actually making use of VEX from end to end, which is exciting. Um, the title of this session is Enabling VEX and Full SVM Coverage. Uh, I had to trim it a little bit because the proper title will also have included all of that uh, because we're going to demo how you can do it the easy way and also another way which requires a little bit more of work but still works. Um, so uh, just before I start a little bit about me, my name is Adolfo Garcia or also Puerco everywhere on the internet. Um, I am a, an open source engineer at Chainguard, a software supply chain um, security company. I also do uh, some open source work. I am one of the technical leads with Kubernetes Seek Release. Uh, I am, this year I'm sitting on the Knative uh, steering committee. I also consider myself to be an SPDX contributor. Um, and I am a maintainer of probably too many S1 tools at this point. Um, I also like to ride my bike around the world. You can see that, that picture of me in Mexico City forcing my kid to like what I like. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so before we start, um, oh, I left the subtitle, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I wanna start with a short story about cars and I'm sorry because I'm, I'm gonna probably say all the wrong thing, uh, things about cars. I hate cars, but uh, they're useful for this. Um, so around the year 2000, uh, complaints uh, like reports started surfacing that tires were mysteriously blowing up. Um, I'm, I'm pro probably some of you are familiar with the story. I know uh, most young people, perhaps not so much so. Uh, but after some investigation, it turned out that the reason for those tires blowing up were uh, tracked. Uh, well, the, the tires were the, the faults were severe enough that. Uh, vehicles started flipping and actually uh, killing people in those accidents. And um, after some investigations, they found out that the, the reason was a fault in the tires that were shipping in the 1990s model of the Ford Explorer. Um, these tires were manufactured by uh, Firestone and apparently they were the only ones having that flaw. And some more research was done and they started uh, locating that those tires also shipped with um, some Bronco models and some whatever that Mazda thing is. And um, so this was severe enough that they issued a massive recall of the tires. Middles of tires started to be recalled. And in the middle of that, um, yeah, more news started surfacing that uh, vulnerable tires may have been shipped in other uh, models. So that gave way to somehow uh, some panic because people started uh, wondering if they, their cars could somehow uh, have a tire blow up and flip. Uh, I, I had a, a Ford SUV at the time with Firestone tires, so I know I was pretty worried. Um, I also had that phone picture there. <laughs> um, but then, uh, since uh, news started surfacing that those tires may be in other models, people uh, who had other 90s SUVs started wondering like, oh, am I affected? Uh, so what about my uh, Durango, I think that is, or what about my beautiful Aztec? Or what about uh, cars derived uh, from other Ford vehicles? Like for example, is my Ford NASCAR racer uh, affected or my for monster truck limo, uh, I don't know, cars. <laughs> um, so uh, jokes aside, the, the problem was severe enough that action needed to be taken, information needed to be sorted out so to locate all of the affected tires. So in the end, around 270 people were killed in accidents related to the tires. And um, my sense, uh, putting on my historian hat and going back into the archives, is that there was not such a good sense of which tire lots were affected. Um, so 
During this talk, I'm going to be using the car as your software application and the tire as one of the components in your software application. Um, it, uh, for SBOM nuts and fans like me, which I see many here, um, you, this analogy should already be familiar. Uh, it's the, the, the software and its components. Um, but yeah, let's uh, start going into that. Um, so the first thing uh, we want to talk about is SBOM completeness. And for people unfamiliar with SBOM, an SBOM is a manifest a list of components uh, of all of the dependencies that conform a piece of software and more information can be added to it. I won't go into what an SBOM is because if you're here for BEX, probably you know what an SBOM is. Um, so why is an SBOM and especially a complete SBOM important? When you consider a complex system like a car, you need to be, make sure that you keep track of all of, it, all of its pieces. So whenever uh, there's a flaw in one of the parts, you need to take that SBOM, which is the same in, in applications, locate the component, and that can tell you if that component is uh, contained in your application. Uh, obviously, if the SBOM is missing part, uh, is missing uh, information, or some of the components are not listed there, uh, you are in a, in a uh, somewhat of a problem. Uh, especially, for example, if you don't have an SBOM, what can you do? Well, what do you do when you uh, don't have like questions about the safety of your car. You take it to the mechanic. And with the mechanic, it's kind of the same. And um, it needs information to do their job. Um, you need to think about the mechanic as an entity, uh, which is not, may not be part of uh, the production of the car, that gives you some certainty about the safety of that vehicle. And um, as I said, the mechanic needs information to do their job. One is the S1. Uh, the mechanic is going to have a much better time if, it, if they have like um, the, uh, the complete car S bomb to go look at the parts and make sure it's working. But what do you do when the information is missing there? Where if information is missing, the mechanic has to pull apart the car, look at every piece and make sure that the car is working. And sometimes the methods of breaking things apart are not the best. So the mechanic has to figure out how to put it uh, um, apart. So in software, I think uh, that assessment is performed today by security vulnerability scanners. Um, but the vulnerability scanners also need complete information. And when they bring the car apart, which is what we call in software, software uh, composition analysis, some software may be uh, easier to decompose or may give you more information than others. Um, and um, so they can also benefit from a complete SBOM. But not only that, there's another problem with security scanner, um, with secure, uh, vulnerability scanner. Um, and so to give you a quick dive into how vulnerability scanner works, it's just fancy database lookups. So here's how a vulnerability scanner works. Um, when you have a piece of software and you run your security scanner through it, what it does is that it looks inside of the application and, and or in this case, if you have an SBOM, it can use the SBOM to locate uh, the components living inside of that application. Here's Gripe looking with its big eye. Um, so it locates the list of components and then it performs a database lookup in one or more security databases. And if it finds a match, it gives you back a report of the, the vulnerabilities that apply to your uh, software project. Now, the problem with that is that sometimes uh, that matching is not perfect. Um, if you have the incomplete list, that's a problem, but th there's also more challenges like actually matching those, uh, the software identifiers, clashes between uh, components that are named the same. Uh, Sometimes the information contained in the databases is not of very high quality or is missing bits to actually do a, a correct matching and other problems. And this leads to uh, lots of false positives in the, in the information. And to show you one, I hope it's still true. Uh, I ran it a while ago. Um, I'm gonna scan 
this, this is scanning the latest Alpine image on, um, this is the Alpine image for Linux AMD64. And when I scan it with Gripe, it will find uh, CV2023-4807 uh, classified as high. Um, now, sounds high. if it's a high vulnerability, it must be serious. Uh, but the thing here is, if we look that uh, if we look at that uh, vulnerability in the, in the NVD, that information only applies to Windows 64 platforms. Here you can see Red Hat knocking it in their own uh, advisories because it doesn't apply to the products. Um, so um, this leads to lots of noise. It leads to uh, a miserable life for people who have to triage these vulnerabilities. And when we left the entire story, uh, panic was ensuing, but also a call for patience because during the entire chaos, people started asking, like calling, uh, whatever had to do with tires, like car dealerships, tire vendors, and all, and just trying to find information about uh, their vehicles. Um, so here's where VEX can uh, enter the picture and help. So um, how can VEX help in this situation? Uh, whenever you're having that anxiety of not knowing if things are safe, and especially being drawn in information that seems redundant and that may not, not apply to you. Um, VEX is like, um, in, the, in our tire analogy, is like having, VEX can, uh, opens a new channel for more expertise to flow and give you more assessments on your vulnerabilities. So we already saw the analogy with the mechanic, but you can also get an, uh, like a thumbs up from the car dealership you can get it from an independent researcher, or maybe the companies involved in the car or the tires themselves can also uh, give you information that makes you feel better about the status and safety work of your car. Um, so VEX, uh, VEX stands for the Vulnerability Exploitability Exchange. And it is a, um, there are many implementations of, well, not many, four implementations of VEX. Uh, and um, OpenVEX is one of them, and we're going to be focusing on OpenVEX for this talk. Um, VEX is a um, community project led by uh, the CISA, well, not led, but facilitated by CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Uh, we have a recurring VEX meeting every morning, uh, which if you're interested in shaping the future of VEX, you can join. And here's how VEX works. VEX is a system of documents uh, that convey statements that inform about the impact that a vulnerability has on a piece of software. A VEX statement uh, contains um, groups together three main things. The first one, a vulnerability. The second one is a product, and that product can specify also a sub, one or more subcomponents. In this case, the product would be the car, subcomponent the tire. And finally, a VEX status. And the VEX status can be one of three um, outcomes. You're affected, and VEX can tell you if mitigations are available or how to apply them. You're not affected. In that case, it can give you machine-readable justifications of why you're not, no, no, it doesn't apply to your software. And finally, it can inform you if the, um, the, the software authors or whoever is looking at the vulnerabilities researching it, so it's under investigation. Um, VEX sequences, uh, VEX uh, statements also contain a timestamp because they form sequences as knowledge of the impact evolves. So here's how you use uh, VEX um, documents in our car analogy. So supposing that you have a tire researcher, uh, this is more of a value of something, but supposing someone is researching the impact on tires and finds that one of the tires is, uh, has, has a flaw. So that person can issue a VEX uh, document containing a statement about the tire as a product. And it lets it down the supply chain. And then where the executives that car companies, for example, can pick up that statement and what we call in VEX, transition it to become the subcomponent of the product. So the first person researches the tire, issues VEX about the tire, and the second one um, issues a new VEX statement 
with the subcomponent with the entire transition as the subcomponent of the new document. And that new document can be picked up by interested parties like the mechanic or the car dealership and leading to happy drivers. <laughs> Business clip part, I love it. Um, so now, how do you generate fake data? Um, when you, so to generate VEX data, you need to have the information that you want to encode in whatever VEX flavor you want to do. Um, so the first, the first option I'm going to show you is using Wolfie. So my company, ChainGuard, produces, uh, maintains this open source uh, Linux on distribution. It's on distribution because it's uh, a Linux distribution optimized for containers, so it doesn't inc include a kernel. Um, and, but we package all sorts of software, and the focus of, of Wolfie is high security, especially for our supply chain applications. Uh, all of the Wolfie packages um, contain SBOMs describing them, which are generated at build time, so you have full coverage of each of the operating system packages. Uh, and the tooling to create images from Wolfie reads those SBOMs, composes them into a, a new SBOM describing the image, so you have full coverage of all of the layers of the image, plus all of the information down to the file level uh, with all of their hashes and, um, and all the information that you need. And the other important part about Wolfie is that Wolfie has its own advisory feed. So whenever there's a new vulnerability, one of the Chainer engineers will go get paged, look at it, and do an assessment and patch the, the, the operating system package, often far quicker than any of the other um, distributions, or knack it if it doesn't apply to us. And based on that information, my team, uh, I work at the research and development area of Trengard, uh, produced this tool called Vexi. And Vexi, which is a super clever uh, composed name of Vex and image. <laughs> Uh, what it does is that it takes the, uh, the Wolfie S-bombs, it takes the, the feed from, um, from the, the Wolfie advisories and produces VEX out of it. So I can give you a quick, um, I can show you a, a quick demo of Vexy. It's not, I mean, it's, it's not very impressive because it, when I hit the, 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 the button, it's going to do things really quick. But what it does is it clones all of the advisory data from, from Wolfie and then generates the VEX. Uh, so clones the advisory data from Wolfie, fetches the SBOM from the image, which in this case I generated an SBOM. Uh, I, I generated VEX for the Node.js image and then composes uh, VEX information for that image. So. As you can see here, here are the components of the statement, the CVE, the timestamp when, when it was generated, the product, which in this case is the, the Node ID, the Node.js image, and, each, and the components for which the, um, the VEX statement applies. In this case, it's a uh, Wolfie GLibC package, and the status here is not affected. Uh, this statement, uh, in this statement, the engineer, whoever wrote this, didn't include a uh, human readable justification. Sometimes the packages have them and you would see them here uh, in, in the Wolfie case. Um, so uh, this is, I mean, I think it's pretty cool because you are uh, taking advantage of the SBOM to generate VEX, of the advisory data to generate VEX. In effect, uh, for uh, your daily applications, it means that you have uh, your Wolfie car is serviced by the full team of Chainer engineers, which is cool, uh, but may not be the case who, for some reason or another, you cannot use Wolfie, and it's, uh, I mean, you should, because it's pretty cool, but perhaps it doesn't, you can't for, for whatever reason. So, what's, what's, um, what other, um, what's, what's the, um, the alternative for people who don't have um, Wolfie in their systems or are using other types of software? Okay, so we, uh, let's, let's compare it. So we had the, the Wolfie car and that's, let, let's try to look at another car. I tried to pick a, another cool car. I, I don't know if it's cool, but I didn't want to like pick a cool one and an ugly one. It's, um, so let's compare them both. Um, with Wolfie, you get the SBOM right away from uh, a generation. And when you build an, an image for Wolfie, it's there. 
that means that using the advisory feed, you can also uh, get VEX for free. Now, on the, on the regular car, you need an SBOM, and you can generate it. If you don't have it, you can use BOM, the tool that we maintain for generation, SBOM generation in Kubernetes. Or if you don't want to be as cool, you can use something like SIFT. And that should give you a good enough SBOM uh, describing your image or any other piece of software. It doesn't have to be container images. I use container images a lot because I'm involved with Kubernetes, but it applies to any piece of software, really. So once you have the SBOM, let's move the Wolfie car away. Ah, presentation chops. <laughs> so um, when you have, um, when you have the, your regular piece of software, the first thing that you need is to have OpenVex data about the components. And this is what, where we're trying to work with all sorts of communities and projects so that they can start generating their own VEX data. Um, right now, the uses that we've seen are companies internally trying to VEX. And then, so one of the, the, security, the security team inside of companies will generate um, VEX data for their own components. And then using those, they can do VEX today. But um, our hope is that in the near future, especially since our tooling has reached a good level of maturity, other projects will start uh, publishing VEX. So if you're maintaining an open source project and you don't want to get bugged constantly about false positives and things that don't apply to you, VEX could be a, a good solution. So once you generate the SBOM for your application, uh, you're done because using the SBOM, you can look up the components, check out the available VEX data, and generate an SBOM that the security scanners can give you the thumbs up. Um, so how do you do that? Um, and the answer for that is um, the open VEX tooling. Um, so give me, let me show you. So the first thing that we need, um, remembering the, the vulnerable image that we have here, uh, we need to VEX these two um, CVE. Well, it's just a CVE, but in, found in two components. So what you need is, uh, first we need the SBOM for that image. So I'm going to generate the SBOM for that image, and I'm going to pipe it through the visualizer so that you can see the results. So this is, uh, so this, is uh, this generates, um, if I, let me show you first this. So if I generate the, the SBOM, I'm going to get the raw SBDX for that image. Uh, it has information about the packages and everything. And by visualizing it, we can understand better how it looks like. So at the top, we have the image, and then one layer, and all of the operating system components. These are all Alpine, Alpine packages. And our vulnerability is found in these two here. right? So. Let's suppose that OpenSSL decided, oh, we need to start vexing, um, which if they were doing it, uh, we could be using those files instead of generating them ourselves. Um, so hopefully soon. So let me show you uh, what they look like. Mm, for example, this is one of them. So here's uh, the, the, the file. Uh, the document to vex this CV in libssl. So it's again the vulnerability, the the the, the name of the vulnerability, the timestamp, uh, the product ID, which is a PURL that defining that package, and I'm specifying here the architecture, and then um, the status, which is not affected, and then um, I added a human readable note, uh, which VEX processors may choose or not to surface to the users. They can just opt to do the, uh, the operation fully automatically. And here's the machine readable justification. Uh, vulnerable code node in execute path, which I don't know if it's the best fitting one, but it's one of them that could apply. So um, I have that document. Uh, and now what? Well, now I need to build, if you think about this, this is the VEX document for the component, for the tire of the car. But I want to build the VEX document for the car itself. So how do I do that? And the way you do it is um, you use VEXCTL, which is the main tool from the OpenVEX project. 
I, I, this doesn't blow up. This is like 21st century S1 technology, so bear with me. It's not even merged yet, but this is the way it works. So the way it works, this subcommand reads an S1, analyzes all of the um, components it finds, and then it will give me, uh, I can pass it more OpenVex documents where it will look for information about them. Our hope is to find, uh, at some point auto discover all of this, and then it should give me a new document um, describing not the tire, but the car, which is my container image. So I run it and it's here. So if you see the new document, I mean, all of these fields are not, I, I didn't define them, so they're, they're empty, but uh, you can pass your name and all those uh, fields, values for those fields. So here's a vulnerability, the timestamp when I generated the document, and here is the, um, the new product uh, here I'm using the, um, the 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 PURL the packet URL for uh, the Alpine image that I was just showing you. Um, OpenVex has more fields to do the matching um, on on the software that you're doing. So it's here's a packet URL which I'm using as an ID because it can fit as an RII, and then it can also match on the hashes and other identifiers. And here's the subcomponent, here's the tire. So the image is a car and the tire is here. Uh, not affected and here's the transitioned uh, human readable message and the justification. Now, if you have that document, your question is, well, what good does it, what purpose does it have? How do I use it? And the way you use it is when you, when you scan the image, uh, you get this false, false positive here. And what you do with the VEX document is that you feed it into uh, one uh, a scanner that is VEX enabled. And as of last week, we merged um, OpenVEX support into Gripe. So you just pass it the um, documents. I think I have it back history. Uh, yeah, here it is. So um, um, this is a new flag in the latest release of Gripe. You pass it the VEX, um, the VEX, um, the VEX flag with the document that I just um, generated. And when I run it, it says no vulnerabilities found. But if you look closely, you'll see that the vulnerabilities are still there, but they just have been ignored because I'm choosing to trust those VEX documents and they in uh, Gripe is, um, is still finding them, but not showing them to me. So if I run gripe with the show suppressed, all right, yeah, with the show suppressed flag, it will show me what Vex did. So you see here that those vulnerabilities are still there, but Vex chose to suppress them. So this is this is this is Vex end to end from generation all the way to the scanner. Um, so. Uh, our hope is that uh, the new channel of information that VEX is going to open is going to enable this sort of thing fully automatic. There's still some work that we need to do, um, especially around the areas of auto discovery and trust, uh, but things are moving really, really fast. Uh, there are many interested parties, so um, we hope to, to see some progress really, really soon. Um, so thank you. Um, and I wanted to just open the invitation, like, like open invite for anybody that wants to participate in this, this open, pro open source project. Uh, OpenVEX is a project that's incubating in, uh, in the OpenSF. We have bi-weekly meetings. Um, that's a repo or join us on the OpenSF SIG OpenVEX uh, channel on uh, the OpenSF Slack. Um, that's the Wolfie uh, main repository and uh, the, the tooling uh, which you can use to generate the images and that's my contact data. Um, so yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> and I think we have time for questions if anybody has some. Oh, uh, there's a... Um, 
So my question is pretty basic. So uh, let's say internally in my org, uh, someone found a vulnerability and um, it's a proprietary tool, so we don't want to uh, expose it. So we generated a CV kind of internally. And then uh, we also created a VEX for it. So how can I notify my entire org? So let's say we have a um, SBOM in, uh, you know, uh, a process is there. Every product has an SBOM. How can I notify all of them about this vulnerability along with the VEX to check whether their product is vulnerable or not? Well, so if you're producing SBOMs, the best way is add the VEX file as an external reference on the SBOM. That's, that's the, the key. And then you solve all. I mean, we want to make sure that VEX is auto discoverable, but nothing beats the component itself pointing to the VEX file. Um, so that's the one. And uh, what was the other part of the question? Uh, the part is like, uh, is there a way I can publish this VEX information? So every product can, you know, uh, from there as mom just go through it and make sure it's not vulnerable. Yeah, uh, so uh, that's the, the discoverability part. So right now, uh, our tooling supports uh, automatically fetching the VEX data from images that are attached to the image, like six or style, um, and signing them as well. Uh, Another feature being built is finding OpenVEX at a well-known location in GitHub repositories. That's another one. Uh, but I think so far, that's the only ones I think are fine, unless you feed them manually like that. Uh, but using the SBOM, that's the best way, because you, if you distribute the SBOM and you have already a way of distributing it, the SBOM can point to the OpenVEX document. Okay, thank you. So in one of your slides, uh, you were using the VEX CTL mm -hmm. uh, that was reading an SBOM. Uh, what was the output of that? Was another SBOM or? So it was in, in the demo, right? Yeah, in the demo. This one? Uh, yeah, that one. This? Yeah, so th is that the, like, the enriched SBOM or? So yeah, so the, here's the, the flow is you call VEX CTL uh, and what VEXCTL is, does is it reads the SBOM. So the SBOM is, a, in this case, is the standard SPDX uh, mm -hmm. SBOM. And then it uses the, the list of components from the SBOM and the information contained in the VEX from the components, does the crossing and gives you back this document, which is an open VEX document. Okay. So it's, this is pure VEX information and nothing else. 